My next guest can turn any table, I suppose, into a negotiating table and be sure that these negotiations will take place on Ukraine's terms. He is a very important person for our country, for our project and for me personally. Minister of Foreign Affairs of Ukraine, Dmitro Kuleba. We have Kompot here. Mr. Kuleba, I am very glad you came. I am very, very glad. Glad to see you. Thank you very much. I want to say to those who don't know that you were our first such a public, very powerful celebrity guest at the first Quiet Evening Show. And now, here you are again. Well, sadly, you are the last guest of the last episode of The Quiet Evening in 2023. Today, we have been telling stories, recalling and trying to analyze this year. Because a lot has happened in the lives of each of us, the events were very dense. What have you remembered about it the most? What was your year like? There was a lot of work. That is clear, yeah. I will not surprise anyone. There were several happy moments with the children. There was a feeling that we were all moving in the right direction, both in our personal lives and in our work. And probably I was able to spend more time with my children. That's very heartwarming. It's still not even near as much as it was before the war. But somewhere late at night, Yehor and I, we go for a walk with the dogs, for example. I am very glad that I managed to find these hours and instead of just lying there and recharging the batteries, I was recharging them while communicating with Yehor and Luba. Class. Cool, but there is never enough time like this. What did the children ask Santa and Saint Nicholas? What are the wishes now? My son Yehor is 17 years old. The gift he asked for the new year was a tactical military belt that is unloading one, but he is now passing his first session in his life, and he is doing quite well. I'm very proud of him. And so I decided to fulfill another of his dreams. He had a dream to buy a very cool sight for an automatic rifle because he is professionally engaged in tactical training and shooting. And so, in addition to the tactical belt he wanted, which we agreed that I would give him for the new year, there was that one as well. But it's not a secret anymore, because he knows. Because you have already presented it. I've already given it to him, yes. And another gift. Well, these are the gifts. Children ask for gifts that correspond to our time. Tell us more about what we discussed at the beginning of the year. There was a story about McDonald's. McDonald's came back and one day we started preparing for the visit of Secretary of State Antony Blinken, with whom we worked to get McDonald's back. We started preparing for his visit to Ukraine. So I'll reveal a little behind-the-scenes detail. Back when McDonald's came back, I wrote to the Secretary of State about it. He replied that the next happy meal was on me. And a year has passed since then, and we are preparing this visit, and suddenly the American side says that the Secretary of State is ready. He wants to go to the Kyiv McDonald's. Really? He hasn't forgotten? Yes, he hasn't. And we actually went to McDonald's with him and he bought a portion of fries. I bought a cherry pie. We sat there and we stopped just on the way from one place to another at McDonald's, one of the Kyiv McDonald's. The only thing is that I paid for the meal, after all, he was a guest. Yes, but that's how this culinary diplomacy sometimes works in a passenger ship. And then I saw a t-shirt on the internet where someone posted a picture of Blinken and me at McDonald's. He's eating fries, I'm eating a pie. And it doesn't say diplomat in English, it says diplomats, which translates as diplomat France. Diplomats in English, uh -huh. uh, diplomats. <laughs> yes, and didn't you bring him to Kyivska Parepichka? Next time we'll go to Kyivska Parepichka. But Tony is not the only one I'm integrating into the culinary life of Ukraine, because I have had another case. At the beginning of this winter, the British Foreign Secretary came to Ukraine and there was a bombing in Kyiv, no water, and we went to a restaurant because we had to feed the guest. You can't leave him hungry. And there was literally no electricity or water, because remember, after one of the bombings in Kyiv there was no water for several days. And they cooked a super dinner with the candles, flashlights and water cans. Did he see how it was done? He knew the conditions under which it was all done. 
And then he had other events there. And this is James Cleverly, my British colleague. He has now became the Secretary of State for the Home Department, moved from foreign affairs to internal affairs. And I offered him another one in the evening. We have a friendly relationship, a good relationship. I invited him to meet me at the bar in Kiev in the evening, and we went to this bar and had another cocktail. There he had the opportunity to talk, to see that even without electricity, without anything, Ukrainians are trying to live somehow and keep living. And now six months have passed. We're sitting in the UN Security Council chamber at a ministerial meeting on Ukraine, and James cleverly takes the floor and begins his speech on the highest international platform. That is, there is nothing higher. He starts with the story of his trip to a Kyiv restaurant and how impressed he was with the strength of Ukrainian spirit, the professionalism, that under any circumstances these people continue to live and show that nothing can break them. Class. It is very pleasant. But there is a little dramatic secret which can be revealed. In fact, he wanted to talk about his visit to a bar, but his advisor said that a bar would be probably too much. Let's talk about the restaurant. From the high stage about a restaurant. It was a very powerful human story about how nothing can break Ukrainians. And it resonated very strongly. And I thank him for the fact that he was able to activate the right energy with such a human story. This is very cool, but if I may ask you a personal, perhaps a little bit amateurish question, these are people who are influential and make decisions at the highest level. Don't they have some kind of perspective on the way we live, that everything is fine here? Well, relatively speaking, your colleague from the UK, he got into such a moment, but sometimes there is light, there is water. Don't they have the feeling that we are here living normally? Doesn't it affect their emotional state when they are making decisions later? Because what is here in Kyiv, it's not the same in other cities. We understand that we are given this opportunity to live normally here. We have to thank our air defense forces, our armed forces, for ensuring that air defense protects the sky over Kyiv. Of course. And the armed forces fight the enemy at the front. And I think that gratitude to the soldiers is something that should be absolutely unconditional. And I thank everyone. On a daily basis. I thank men and women in the defense forces of Ukraine for this year. For 100%. When guests come, you know, you have to understand where they are coming from. They come from a completely different reality. For them, even the sound of an alarm is stressful. They understand what is happening here. It is here in contrast when they see how resilient Ukrainians are. In bearing these risks, they are impressed. It makes a very big impression on them. Let's hope so. We all realize that this is another very difficult year for our country. It is at war and sometimes I think you and we all lack good news. But recently we received very good and quite pleasant news. And it is in your direction to start negotiations on Ukraine's entry into the EU. Could you please tell us how this decision was made and what processes are currently underway? What do we still need to do? First of all, I congratulate all Ukrainians on this Christmas gift. Indeed it is. It is true that we live in times when history is being made on our watch. There is a saying that history is being made before our eyes. In fact, we Ukrainians are writing history, the history of Europe, the history of the world, and we need to realize this. A large team of people worked on this decision, because a decision of this complexity cannot be made by one person. I absolutely want to say that it was thanks to teamwork and we ensured it, and the president played a decisive role, of course, when he made a very powerful speech at the meeting of the Council of the European Union. Preparing for his visit, his speech, I participated in the meeting of the Council of the Ministers of the European Union a few days before. And it was such a moment when you did everything you could. And then they locked themselves in the room and you realize that now everything depends on them. You are on the edge all day long. 
Did I do it right? Did I call everyone? I can imagine this tension. We were together with the president and other members of his team, and we discussed, maybe we could do this and maybe this, and we did the right thing there. And you, here you have fur three needles, a Christmas tree. You literally sit there and feel every single needle stab in your skin because you're all nervous. And then we were sitting on the plane and we were disconnected. But one person had a connection and he established this connection and the president came to us and said, yeah. yes, we have it. And it was just super. But at that moment you don't feel any emotion yet, because you just exhale and realize that we are all together and you in particular have done your job for the country. And then, when the realization of this decision comes, the adrenaline rush begins. Yes, this understanding. What would be next? Next, there will be membership negotiations and then there will be Ukraine's membership in the European Union. And today is a day of miracles. Today is a day to make a wish. The dreams will come true. Let's set that. With compote. With compote, yes. Так, пан Дмитро, я вас питала про Миколая і Санту для ваших дітей. Ви дуже цікаві історії розповіли. Я хочу зараз So, Mr. Dmitro, I asked you about St. Nicholas and Santa for your children. You told very interesting stories. I want to play with you now. We have prepared a small board game. I offer you to play a geopolitical secret Santa. So, let's do it. If you have a sniper Santa, I have one wish for him. Ні, дивіться, перший у нас на черзі пан no, there is Mr. Scholz, the first in line. What would you, as a secret Santa, give him? Well, I have one thought, but in fact, I would give him something small, symbolic, and so inherently Ukrainian. Some kind of souvenir to show my gratitude for the crucial role he played at this summit. All the leaders there were great, but it was he who at the crucial moment, it was his conversation with Hungarian Prime Minister Orban that prevented the Hungarian veto. Because Chancellor Scholz is a very humble person and a very dignified humble person. Therefore, I would give him something small, Ukrainian, but something that would make him feel our gratitude for his leadership. Добре, окей, приймається, звичайно. А тепер не відходячи. Окей, accept it, of course. And now, without going too far from the conversation, this man. Я думаю, що у Санти ж треба заслужити подарунок. I think you have to earn a gift from Santa. So I think we'll skip him this year, but we promise that if everything goes well next year. He'll definitely get a present. I adore you, Mr. Dmitro. Maybe, you know, maybe there is an opposite approach to it. Sometimes I do this with my children because this year they missed a little bit too because of what was going on. There were some moments. There were issues and they came up asking where gifts are and I said, well, I'm sorry, there was such an atmosphere in the house that, well, he probably didn't want to come here. And they said, oh my God, we apologize, we have realized everything, so maybe we should give him something to make him realize. And we have already sent him a constructive signal with the promise of a gift. But I want us all to understand that no matter how difficult it is with Hungary, it is our neighbor and a member of the European Union and we will have to talk to it. We need to find a common ground, we need to find approaches without compromising our absolutely fundamental interests, because we will ultimately still live together in the European <laughs> Union. We are still neighbors, yeah. Well, then here it is, Biden. I remember on February 23rd, 2022, when I had the honor of being welcomed by the President of the United States and on the way out of the Oval Office, when we were saying goodbye, he came out a little bit to see me off. 
and there was this big plate of White House cookies. And finally he took a cookie and said to me, take a cookie to go. So I think that the best way we can thank him for all the super support, super help that Ukraine feels from him personally, from the United States, is some very, very tasty Ukrainian cookies. Because he is a very sincere, warm person. He won't be surprised by any expensive gifts, but he needs to know the sincerity and warmth that Ukrainians feel for him. Yes, it is. Good. As the Minister of Foreign Affairs, I can only have one gift for the armed forces of Ukraine and the Commander-in-Chief. And that is more artillery shells, more drones, and we are working on this every day. Yes, I think this is the only thing he wants at all. And if he mentally writes any letters, they are like this. Mr. Dmitro, it seems to me that we have all been lacking worms for the last few years. And so I really wanted to ask you in these last moments of the Quiet Evening Project to wish us something warm, perhaps something that you didn't have time to say before. I just know how you can do it, and I know how powerful your words are. I have wishes right away and I didn't prepare for it, but I myself live it every day. And I want all Ukrainians to live this way, with faith in victory. I've been in so many situations in my life in general and over the past year when people tell me it won't happen, it's impossible, you won't be able to do it, they will turn their backs to you, they will abandon you. You are told all of this and it's very difficult to keep the faith that everything will be fine. Because when all this negativity is hitting you from all sides, it's very difficult to hold on. But this year we have shown once again how cool we are as a country and as people. And I wish you the same, dear Ukrainians, I don't know where to look. I will look at you. Dear Ukrainians, believe in victory. Believe that everything will be fine, no matter how difficult it is. No matter who is telling you that everything will be bad. Believe, and then everything will be fine, and there will be victory. Happy New Year! Mr. Dmitro, I adore you, I just have to admit it. Because honestly, from the first episode to the last, you brought your energy with us. We remembered when you were here with us, and it was honestly such a boost. It was like, yes, we needed someone to support this new program, someone very bright. I am extremely grateful to you, to your entire team for what you do. I wish you good news this year, I wish you successful negotiations, and I wish you health. May this year be a magical one for you. I thank you very much. I wish you all of this in return. Let me tell you a story about you. This is where I start to worry. A year ago I took part in our first episode. Olena Kravets, I was very happy to meet the star. And then she wrote me a message, Mr. Dmitro, we need to meet, I have an idea, of course I agreed. And you came to a meeting with a guy who works in the VR industry. And you proposed a virtual reality project where people can put on glasses and get right into the center of Bucha, Irpin and other destroyed cities, destroyed Mria and experience all this. And then your mission was fulfilled. You went on to make the program quite evening, and we started working with the guy you had brought in. And this year it has become a super hit project. Universities and schools around the country are chasing him. We took him to the most unexpected cities and countries in the world, not only in Europe, but also in South Africa and the Middle East. And we are now scaling this project up even more, and we'll be shooting new videos. I'm extremely grateful to you for this acquaintance, because we have received a very powerful tool to tell our story. To show and to stir up this emotion. The last time I launched this project here in the European Parliament, it was just before the decision to open membership negotiations. So let's assume that your project had a part in this decision. Mr. Dmitro, thank you. You make me happy. Can I give you a hug? This is all true. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the gift. Happy New Year. Thank you.